Now a jump in energy is one in which the atom goes from being in a state of initial energy EI to an energy EF. And this will equal, because of the minus sign, e squared over 2, 1 over the final radius minus 1 over the initial radius. And that should equal the wavelength of the uh, energy of the photon given by either h times the frequency or hc over the wavelength. Now, from here, Bohr was simply motivated to try to get his model to agree with Balmer's formula for the uh, spectra observed uh, for the emission or absorption of, of light from hydrogen. To do that, Bohr simply imposed a condition. He required that each of these allowed radii in his model had the form of an integer squared times some constant, a naught, and the final radius in which all these electrons would land was the particular case where that energy was equal to 2. In this expression, n is an integer greater than 2, and a0 is a constant yet to be determined, and it's referred to nowadays as the Bohr radius. We'll see in a moment that this Bohr radius has some physical significance. It is, for now, though, the radius of the smallest orbit. Compare with the Balmer formula. And we have that the nth energy level simply minus e squared over 2 a naught n squared. And again, comparing to the Balmer formula, this constant a naught is given by e squared over 2 hc times the Rydberg constant and could be therefore calculated using the experimental value for the Rydberg constant and hc to be about 0.53 angstroms. This is pretty significant because Bohr found that the innermost radius of an orbiting electron was about the correct order of magnitude for the size of the hydrogen atom. It was already known that hydrogen molecules, h2, had a size of on the order of three quarters of an angstrom and therefore it was not unreasonable that a hydrogen atom would be on the order of half of an angstrom. The second important thing about Bohr's prediction is that it also predicts 
the energy required to strip an electron from a hydrogen atom. or to ionize it. And that's equal to minus E1 is equal to plus E squared over 2 A naught 1 squared, which if you put in the four radius turns out to be 13.6 electron volts. And that's a quantity that had already been measured. Or furthermore noted, the up to n equals 30 lines had been observed in stars, And that's not unreasonable because the gas in a star is considerably less dense uh, at its outer per perimeter from the gas here on Earth. And so it would be reasonable to see electrons drop from n equals 30 down to the location of n equals 2.